Hello and welcome to all of our gold viewers who are here with us today. I'm Kristen Schwartz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here. And today I'm chatting with Alyssa Schnell about her upcoming presentation titled Demystifying Induced Lactation, How Lactation Happens Without Pregnancy and Birth. Welcome back, Alyssa. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Nice to see you, Kristen. It's wonderful to have you back, back by popular demand here at Gold. <laughs> and uh, you, of course, are part of the Gold Learning Day, elevating our expertise on lactation, physiology, and endocrinology. What a what an exciting topic. I'm, I'm, I have to tell you, I have, I'm really excited for, for this day. It feels like us nerds can really <laughs> get into it, right? <laughs> and really, really learn, uh, you know, dig a little deeper in all these wonderful hormones and such. And I want to talk about you presentation in a moment but first of all Alyssa where in the world are you I'm in St. Louis Missouri in the U.S. which is right in the middle right in the middle there it's always yeah. nice to know where our speakers are from because it's such an international event or you know we're such an international company with international speakers and our audience is from all over the world I always love finding out where our speakers are so now let's talk about you and your background I know you've been with us before you've done a couple of these interviews too but some of the people might not have met you yet Alyssa so talk about your background here uh, sure. I'm an IBCLC in private practice, and I started out my practice as an IBCLC in 2010, or I've been in the IBCLC since 2009, and started out really seeing a wide variety of clients. But in the last few years, I've sort of pruned my practice and really focusing on inducing lactation and relactation. That's my, that's actually how I got into this. I started out as a Lulecha League leader and I had two children by birth, my third by adoption and breastfed my child by adoption and just became passionate about that experience it was just incredible experience. Um, and I wanted to take things to the next level to really help people at a deeper level that I could as a Lulecha League leader. So that's why I became an IBCLC. And then I got to a point where I just really wanted to focus on my clients inducing lactation and relactation. So primarily right now, my clientele is from all over the world. So I see my clients via HIPAA compliant Zoom. And um, yeah, and we really just focus on client. Most of my clients are either adoptive parents, intended parents, parents through surrogacy, or um, queer couples where they're, they're interested in co-nursing. So usually one parent is the birthing parent and the other parents inducing lactation. Oh, what a wonderful service you provide, Alyssa. It really, oh, that spe speaks so much to me. This is beautiful from your own experience, from your own journey, you know, uh, with adoption. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can imagine when you started that journey yourself, you probably didn't get too many resources or help uh, when you when you started that, right? Or, or was it very easy to come by information for you? Probably not, right? No, it wasn't. In fact, the most helpful source of information was um, the book by Diana West, Defining Your Own Success, which was written for people who've had breast reduction surgery. Mm -hmm. That was the closest I could get. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing else out there. <laughs> there really wasn't much out there. And I was so fortunate because I well, had my own personal experience with breastfeeding, but also I was a Lulich League leader. So I had that whole set of resources there. So I and I'm kind of a researcher kind of person. So I, I right. researched it and took the, it was kind of in some ways therapeutic because it, it's hard being in that waiting space when you're adopting, waiting yeah. for that call to have the match. That was something okay. I could do. I could research breastfeeding, prepare for breastfeeding. And, but I don't think that that's something everybody wants to do <laughs> over and over again. And so that's why I wrote my book, Breastfeeding Without Birthing, and have this practice so that people don't have to be alone. I felt like I was alone in the yeah. wilderness finding my way, and that was okay, but I think I want it to be better, have there be more support and more information. For, yeah, yeah, people I, I, moving forward. And, and what a beautiful resource that is for families out there, you know, because I can I can only imagine how alone that must feel. Because you know, if you if you don't have the support, if you don't have, you don't even know where to start. Like you you were you had your own breastfeeding journey prior to that, and uh, you know, and then you were an IBCLC. But many people, maybe never they never had a baby or never were able to breastfeed to begin with, right? When depending on what uh, what their circumstances are, so they don't even know where to. To look for 
what to look for. And so your book and the service you provide is a, is a great resource and a fantastic resource there as well. And I can only imagine another question I have for you. When you started out your research and I, I in the last few years, it feels like we have more research available on lactation in general, right? On, you know, it, is this now almost like doors opening when you look at the research now going, oh, I wish I had this a few years ago. And where was that paper? And <laughs> do you feel that sometimes? Oh, you know what? I feel like it's growing with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe right. I'm a little bit glad that there was a limited amount of information when I started. <laughs> and then as I'm learning, I'm ready to take it in. Yes. So I think it, the timing has worked out well. The me. timing has worked out yeah. great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And we're still not done. I feel like we're just like scratching the surface. I feel like there's still so much more to learn. And um, and it also has to do with, you know, research is important, but also um, valuing not only human milk, but also the act of breast and chest feeding, right? Because otherwise, you know, um, this is so much more than just food. You know, it's this whole bonding experience for the parent, for the baby, right? So can you talk about this a little bit too? Yeah, you know, I, I think most people in my experience, whether they're birthing parents or non-birthing parents, come into breastfeeding or chest feeding uh, because of the health and the, you know, the nutritional, the immunological mm -hmm. benefits to it. And it's, I think it's oftentimes not until after we've had the experience that we realize how, how important the bonding, the connection is. But I, I would imagine though, and I think this is true for non-birthing parents, they probably are more aware of it because mm -hmm. they don't have that pregnancy experience. They're not, they're not able to connect in that way to their babies, they understand that it's especially important to connect mm -hmm. in other ways once the baby is in their arms. Beautiful. Yeah, well said. Um, now on to your presentation. It's really exciting. Demystifying induced lactation, how lactation happens without pregnancy and birth. And I really love, I've had a little sneak peek of what you were going to show us here at Gold, that you really go into detail and seeing, telling us how things are really working together, the hormones, how everything is happening, but doing it in a way that's still very easy to understand and really something we can take into our practice and really help the families we serve. So talk a little bit about what you will be speaking on. Yeah, actually, I'm very excited about it because in the past, when I've thought about how we go about inducing lactation, I've done kind of what you alluded to a few minutes ago. I looked at the research, how it was done in by other people in other mm -hmm. places and, and even other times, like going back into the history is interesting too, when there was less right. availability of certain technology and medicine. Um, and so looking how everyone did it in the past and using what was done in the past to apply to what we do today. But for this presentation, I took a different angle. I looked at what do we know about general lactation, lactation following pregnancy and birth? How does lactation work there and how do we take what we already know about that and apply it to inducing lactation? How do we take this um, understanding the hormones that happen in pregnancy mm -hmm. and birth and take those things and apply them in a way to help us induce lactation? So it's really just with the same result, but coming at it from a different angle, which is really interesting. And it was very satisfying to see that the solution was the same. We're just coming at it from a different type of understanding. Oh, that's fantastic. And it must have been so exciting for you to see that, right? Like, <laughs> this is an amazing way of looking at it, too. Right, because it did seem a little bit um, magical before. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, this makes sense. And one of the things that I'll talk about in the presentation that's pretty, I think, neat is that it's really not so different than many of the other things we already understand about lactation. We're we can take some of the information that we have in our typical clients and use that to support inducing lactation. That's helpful information right there because many of the IBCLCs who may be thinking of, oh, when I get into this field more, you know, but it feels like kind of almost overwhelming because it feels like this whole separate thing about knowing what they already know and taking that, that should be, I mean, uh, you know, something that gives people hope, oh yeah, I can, I can be that person who really gets into this and helps others, right? Yeah, that's what I think too. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Wonderful. Oh, Alyssa, it's been so nice talking to you. And I can't wait for this presentation. I feel like we're going to all benefit from this uh, wonderful knowledge that you're going to share. But before I let you go, any last words uh, if you want uh, to our viewers here <laughs> for our viewers? I don't think so, other than I'm just really excited to share this. It's it's all new. Um, it's it's This is the first time I've done this presentation. Fantastic. And uh, I think that... Uh, if you've seen some of my work, you'll, you'll be seeing some new things. So I hope. Oh, beautiful. This. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so that is fantastic. So we all learn something new at this point here from you at this presentation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for being here today and chatting with me uh, about your wonderful background and your work and your book, of course, and now about this presentation as well here. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you all in January. And yes, this presentation, as I mentioned before, is part of our Go Learning Day that happens in January. We have uh, two other presentations, so a total of three presentations, all under the topic of uh, the wonderful physiology and endocrinology. And so if you want to find out more about these other topics, you can go to goldlearning.com. And we hope to see everyone in January at the Gold Learning Day. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>